Good evening. Very glad to have everyone here uh, this Wednesday evening, get together for Bible study. It's very refreshing that we can come in the middle of our otherwise busy weeks to take a special time to dedicate to learning more about God's Word and then having a devotional to Him. Several announcements for this evening. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and have you mark the uh, invitation song number 67. Invitation song will be number 67. Congratulations to Nate and Ashley Woodall. Um, Eastern, Easton Sanders Woodall arrived yesterday. He weighed 8 pounds, 14 ounces, and was 21 and a half inches long. Uh, proud grandparents are Tammy and Alan uh, Edson, and Edson and Betty Sanders, the proud great-grandmother. And then uh, Service Team 6 will be doing a diaper pounding for the Woodalls. So please bring uh, Huggies diapers and Pampers wipes and place in the box next to the secretary's office. Sandy Radcliffe, the sister of Rick Presnell, who had previously been in uh, intensive care, is now at home and a hospice has been called in to take care of her, so please keep her in your prayers. Jimmy Shepard, Shirley's husband, and uh, Sandra George's dad had an accident yesterday morning with a table saw and uh, lost three fingers uh, as a result of that and was able to uh, have a couple of those reattached with surgery, um, but one of them was uh, too severely damaged, so please keep him in your prayers. Our sympathy is extended to Mutt Glover and the death of his brother Milton. Uh, he was also the brother-in-law of Lena Mae Brewer. Visitation will be Friday from 10 until 2 at the Berry Hill Funeral Home with a funeral following immediately afterward in the Berry Hill Chapel. We have a special prayer request from the preacher at the Mololoa Congregation in Honduras. Freddie and Cynthia are a part of the youth group there. They are special friends of Butch and Patty and Michael and Beth. Their mother was diagnosed with cancer yesterday, and they were very frightened and asked for us to please pray for them that they will not lose their mother. Um, and her name is Ma Magili Pineda. Um, additional announcement for the Honduras team members that your uh, next deposit, which I believe is $200, is due this coming Tuesday, or no, this coming Sunday. So be sure to turn that in. Please bring pictures for the senior banquet video to Leanne Richard. Uh, please limit this to 10 to 15 pictures and be sure to include any group photos that you might have. Um, and those are due to her by the 30th, April the 30th. FHU Associates will be hosting a princess tea party this coming Saturday the 13th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the West Huntsville Congregation. And there's a flyer, informational flyer on the bulletin board outside the office or you can talk to Elisa Watson if you want more information about that. Youth News um, is due tonight to Seth and Jill for them to get that publication out if you have any youth news. Additionally for the youth, um, if you're interested in attending the, the Faulkner camp, then there is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board out there by the office. And what are the dates for that camp again, Hunter? 7th through, 7th through the 13th of July. If you are interested in helping some of our members in cutting their lawns uh, or doing other, other yard work, please see Mike Broad. The last leaders will be having their annual banquet uh, this coming Sunday night after services. You're asked to please sign the list near the secretary's office and we need you to let us know how many of you and your family will be attending as uh, barbecue pork will be furnished for that. And so we also need you to sign up to bring a side dish. Uh, everything else will be provided. They need the, the count by tonight, so please be sure to sign that list tonight if you intend to go to that. And then finally, all men who serve in, the, in a public way during worship, that is you know, leading prayers and ushering and distributing the Lord's Supper, etc., you are asked to meet next Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. in the auditorium. Um, all men who are not uh, currently serving in a public way but would like to, are asked to attend this meeting as well. Daniel Harbin will be leading us in our closing prayer this evening. Let's begin our devotion.
What's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? I know you answer a lot of questions during the day. That's not necessarily one that you probably want to. We often don't like to talk about difficulties. We often don't even like to think about them. But how would you answer that question? What's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? You know, if we had the opportunity, I think it'd be very valuable if we could go around the room and hear the responses. Probably give us a lot of insight into one another. To hear that someone else may be going through something that you went through. I know we have a common love. I know we have a common faith. Sometimes we have common difficulties. And I think that would be very valuable for us to strengthen each other. Since we don't have the time to do that, I I took the luxury to ask some of our young people that same question. Had a little different spin on it. Most of the time their difficulties are minimal compared to adults, and that's good. A lot of times their difficulties come from their parents. So I asked them, what is the hardest thing your parents have ever asked you to do? Miles said, to clean up. Trey followed suit, and he said, to clean up my playroom. That's why I got married, so I wouldn't have to clean up. Mackenzie said, to pick up after your dogs. That's why I don't have dogs. Austin said, to do your chores. I don't like those either. Lucas said to feed goats. Angel said to help inspect ducks. Not real sure what Nathan and Sarah are asking Angel to do, but she doesn't like to inspect the ducks. And Eli said to be good. And you all laugh because you know, for Eli, that is probably the most difficult thing for him to do. It's always interesting to hear the response of children. Some of the most popular commercials right now, the AT&T commercials, where the guy asks the children in the classroom, you know, is it, is it better to be fast or slow? And they're, they're like, fast, of course. And, you know, that's, that's my favorite one. You know, strap a cheetah to grandmother's back. That's funny. But, you know, kids are often very honest. And a lot of times their responses are filled with humor. But often there, you know, there's some wisdom in there too. I bet if you were to ask those kids the, that, if I were to ask you, The same question that I asked those kids. What's the most difficult thing for you as kids to do? You guys that are older would answer that a little differently. Especially if you're responsible for kids during a service. You would probably say, no, the most difficult thing for kids to do is be still. And if you don't get that, then just ask Jill to let you borrow Bailey for a service. And you may understand that. I can still remember the lessons of being still that my dad instilled with me with his uh, hands and with the belt. If you were to ask him, he would tell you that they either didn't sink in or there were not enough of them. But it's so ironic. The idea of being still to sit there and do nothing to not say a word, to not move, is the most difficult thing for kids to do. But you know, as we get older, things don't change that much. The psalmist said in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. 
And we've got these lives that hustle and bustle and are always moving. And there's no slow down. And then I, I guarantee you if I were to ask you tonight that you probably have plans tonight after service. And you probably have plans tomorrow night, Friday night, and all day Saturday. Sunday we'll be back here. And, oh, but I've got plans after service. And our lives are so busy. And we get caught up in so much that we're involved in. How often do we slow down and do nothing? How often do we slow down, do nothing, and think about our God? How often do we think about how that being in God gives us peace? How often the thinking about being in God, of, of thinking about being still and knowing God, and knowing that He is in control? You know, I would challenge each of you to find some time to do that. Whether it's waking up early in the morning to see the sunrise or going home tonight and turning off the TV. And just think about how awesome God is. How He has worked in your lives. How He is working in your lives. And how He has promised you things to come that we can't even imagine. It may be tonight that, you know, you're a Christian. But the hustle and the bustle have put God on the back burner. And you don't have that peace that you, that you once had knowing that God was in control. Or it may be that you're not a Christian. And you know you really can't be at peace outside of God. You really can't be still and know that He is God unless you are part of Him. Be still and know that He is God. If there's any way that we can help you tonight, we pray that you come as we stand and we sing.
I know the Lord. I know the sick, injured, dealing with cancer and other situations, Father. We pray that if it be your will, you bring them back to their normal state of health. We pray, Father, that you'll be with the shut-ins who may not be able to be with us. We pray, Father, that if it be your will, you could bring them back. Most of all, Father, we're thankful for allowing your son to die on the cross for our sins. We're thankful for the opportunity we have to be with you in heaven someday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 